know. <laughs> Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Jaya Radha Madha no. Kunjabi Hari Jaya Radha Just clap. Clap softly. <laughs> Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Gopi Janavala Bha Giri Varadhani 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 Yashoda Nandana Praja Janaranjana Shodanandana, but the Janarandana. Yes, Shodanandana, but the Janarandana. Shodanandana, but the Janarandana. Yamuna Tira on a Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Jaya Om Vishnu Pad Paramahansa Parutikacharya Ashtoto, the Shishima, the Divine Grace, Srila A.C. Bhakti Vedanta Swami Prabhupada Jai. Iskan VBT founded our charity, Srila Prabhupada Jai. All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to the assembled devotees. All glory to Shiguru and Goranga. Two books. Next time. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. <coughs> okay. On this 11th day of January 2022 in San Diego, we're reading from Srimad Bhagavad Gita as it is, translation and commentary by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. We are continuing in the introduction on page 7, beginning paragraph, out of these five basic subject matters. Out of these five basic subject matters in the Bhagavad Gita, it is established that the Supreme Godhead, or Krishna, or Brahman, or the Supreme Controller, or Paramatma, you may use whatever name you like, is the greatest of all. So before we go on, we should review those five. And they're in the previous paragraph. And we say, the science of God, Bhagavad Gita entails the comprehension of five basic truths. First of all, the science of God is explained. So there's God. Then there's the jivas, or the living entities. So Ishra, the jivas. And then the third is uh, Prakriti, Yes, prakriti of material nature. Then we have kala or time, and finally karma. Those five uh, are activity. 
Okay, resuming where we were. Uh, the living beings are in quality like the supreme controller. For instance, the Lord has control over the universal affairs of material nature, as will be explained in the later chapters of the Bhagavad Gita. Material nature is not independent. She is acting under the directions of the Supreme Lord. As Lord Krishna says, Nayadrakshenapakati suyate sachadachadam. The material nature is working under my direction. When we see wonderful things happening in the cosmic nature, we should know that behind this cosmic manifestation there is a controller. Nothing could be manifested without being controlled. It is childish not to consider the controller. For instance, a child may think that an automobile is quite wonderful to be able to run without a horse or other animal pulling it. But a sane man knows the nature of the automobile's engineering arrangement. He always knows he always knows that behind the machinery there is a man, a driver. Similarly, the Supreme Lord is the driver under whose direction everything is working. Now, the jivas, or the living entities, have been accepted by the Lord, as we will note in the later chapters, as his parts and parcels. A particle of gold is also gold. A drop of water from the ocean is also salty. And similarly, we, the living entities, being part and parcel of the Supreme Controller, or Ishwara, or Bhagavan, Lord Sri Krishna, have all the qualities of the Supreme Lord in minute quantity. We are on page 8, top of page 8. And we have those qualities of His in minute quantity because we are minute Ishwaras, subordinate Ishwaras. We are trying to control nature, as presently we are trying to control space, or planets. And this tendency to control is there because it is in Krishna. But although we have a tendency to lord it over material nature, we should know that we are not the supreme controller. This is explained in the Bhagavad Gita. What is material nature? This is also explained in the Gita as inferior prakriti or inferior nature. The living entity is explained as the superior prakriti. Prakriti is always under control, whether inferior or superior. Prakriti is female, and she is controlled by the Lord, just as the activities of a wife are controlled by the husband. Prakriti is always subordinate, predominated by the Lord, who is the predominator. The living entities and material nature are both predominated, controlled by the Supreme Lord. According to the Gita, the living entities, although parts and parcels of the Supreme Lord, are to be considered prakriti. This is clearly mentioned in the seventh chapter of the Bhagavad Gita. Apare mitastranyam prakritim vidhime param jiva bhutam. This material nature is my inferior uh, prakriti, but beyond this is another prakriti, jiva bhutam, the living entities. Material nature is itself constituted by three qualities. The modes of goodness, the mode of the mode of goodness, the mode of passion, and the mode of ignorance. Above these modes there is eternal time, and by a combination of these modes of nature and under the control and purview of eternal time, there are activities which are called karma. These activities are being carried out from time immemorial, and we are suffering or enjoying the fruits of our activities. For instance, suppose I am a businessman and have worked very hard with intelligence and have amassed a great bank balance. Then I am an enjoyer. But then, say, I have lost all my money in business. Then I am a sufferer. Similarly, in every field of life, we enjoy the results of our work or we suffer the results. This is called karma. Ishra, the Supreme Lord, Jiva, the living entity, Prakriti, nature, Kala, eternal time, and karma, activity, are all explained in the Bhagavad Gita. Out of these five, the Lord, the living entities, material nature, and time are eternal. The manifestation of Prakriti may be temporary, but it is not false. Some philosophers say that the manifestation of material nature is false, but according to the philosophy of the Bhagavad Gita, or according to the philosophy of the Vaishnavas, this is not so. The manifestation of the world is not accepted as false, it is accepted as real, but temporary. It is likened unto a cloud which moves across the sky, or the coming of the rainy season which nourishes grains. As soon as the rainy season is over and as soon as the cloud goes away, 
all the crops which were nourished by the rain dry up. Similarly, this material manifestation takes place at a certain interval, stays for a while, and then disappears. Such are the workings of Prakriti. But this cycle is working eternally. Therefore, Prakriti is eternal. It is not false. The Lord refers to this as my Prakriti. This material nature is the separated energy of the Supreme Lord. And similarly, the living entities are also the energy of the Supreme Lord, although they are not separated but eternally related. So the Lord, the living entity, material nature, and time are all interrelated and are all eternal. However, the other item, karma, is not eternal. The effects of karma may be very old indeed. We are suffering or enjoying the results of our activities from time immemorial. But we can change the results of our karma or our activity, and this change depends on the perfection of our knowledge. We are engaged in various activities. Undoubtedly, we do not know what sort of activities we should adopt to gain relief from the actions and reactions of all these activities. But this is also explained in the Bhagavad Gita. Om Jnana Timarandasya Jnanandana Shalakaya Chakshur Unmilitam Mena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha I was born in the darkness of ignorance, but my spiritual master, Srila Prabhupada, opened my eyes with the torchlight of knowledge. I offer my humble obeisance unto him and all members of Sri Parampara, the disciplic succession. So these pages, page 7, 8, and now 9, Srila Prabhupada is explaining these five elements, five subject matters of the Bhagavad Gita. And they're all uh, essential. The, 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 the nature of these different five and their interrelationships must be known if we're to progress in our path back home, back to Godhead. So the first one, of course, is the Ishwara, and that's Krishna himself. Uh, Ishwara means controller. He's the supreme controller. What is he controlling? He's controlling all his various energies. Now, when Prakriti is mentioned here, uh, there's two Prakritis that are mentioned, the material Prakriti, which is called Upara Prakriti in the seventh chapter, the uh, lower Prakriti or inferior, and the Para Prakriti, which is we ourselves. Now, right away in the Bhagavad Gita, you find that sometimes this Para, this para Prakriti is uh, called the Purusha, because we're, we're trying to be, be the enjoyers. And in our conditioned state, we're acting like Purushas, but we can't really be Purushas, and so we're suffering. And then we go, that favorite verse of mine from the 13th chapter, Purusha Prakriti Stolhi Bhunkde Prakriti Jangonan Karanangona Sangosa Sarasadyoni Janmasu. Uh, the, the living entity who is by nature Prakriti but acting like the enjoyer is known as Purusha and he's, he's within the lower Prakriti. Purusha Prakriti Stohi. Bhunkte Prakriti Jan Gunan. Now the word Bhunkte often means enjoying but it can be in a more general sense uh, experiencing which includes suffering also. Prakriti Jan Gunan. Karanam. He's, he's uh, experiencing the uh, varieties of, of the modes of nature that are born out of the prakriti, born out of the material energy. Prakriti jan gunan. And karanam guna sangosya, the, the, the living entity who's in the human form of body, he can become aware of these modes of nature, and by higher intelligence, he can decide which of those modes of nature he's going to develop and, and be influenced by. M the vast majority, especially in this Kali Yuga, they're just victimized by whatever mode of nature they happen to be thrown into and grow up and they, they, they become uh, attached to that and they stay in those modes generally. You know, it takes effort to rise up out of mode of, of ignorance to come to passion, what to speak of passion and the goodness. That all usually happens only with conscious effort. So, uh, so, the, so the living entity in the, in the human form of life, we're still prakriti and when we, we recognize our subordination to the supreme control of the Ishwar, then that, even theoretically, intellectually, that's the beginning of our reformation, of curing the disease of ignorance, uh, which is uh, keeping us bound in this, in this world of suffering since time immemorial. So the, so the Bhagavad Gita very systematically discusses these five, and uh, we find in the, like Kala, there's three places in the, in the Bhagavad Gita where Krishna identifies himself with time. Most famous is, is, is probably in the 11th chapter, where Arjuna asks of the universal form, 
who is not acting like his friend Krishna, and he's kind of trembling, he's a little bit <laughs> afraid, all of the magnificent and the destructive uh, power of this universal form, and he asks, finally, who are you anyway? You know? And so he says, Carlos me, I'm time. Carlos me loka kshaya pavindo, and I've come to destroy everything. And, and you can see time eventually destroys everything. That it, there's an ultimate, there's little annihilations and there's ultimate annihilation and everything just becomes disintegrated and merges back into Mahavishnu for a long time. So, so in that sense, it's asat. This material energy is asat. And sometimes, it's interesting, sometimes it's said to be non-existent. Nasato vajate bhavo nabhavo vajate sataha. Right near the beginning of uh, chapter 2, Krishna says, for the asat, there is no, how do you open? There's no endurance, bhava. And for the sat, there's no change, there's no uh, destruction. For the sat means it's eternal. So this is a, a, an eternal distinction between the lower energy and the superior energy. We are constitutionally living entities. We're never going to disappear. Jayate mete vakadachan. You know, but when we get entangled in identifying ourselves with the material energy, specifically this body and things related to the body, then we experience ourselves as destructible. When, when the body dies, then we think we're finished. You know, then we get a rude awakening. Oh no, I'm not finished. Look, what's happening? <laughs> Who are those guys? <laughs> you know, everybody goes through that. You know. So, uh, systematically understanding the, 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 the interrelationship, the nature and interrelationship of these five elements is uh, essential. And, and of course, this very important point that all of them are eternal. Now, how is this material world, which is called a sat, what's eternal about it? Well, it always exists, but part of its existence is being non-manifest. Just like, like uh, when everything is merged in Mahavishnu, there's no manifestation of all of these varieties. So, uh, in that sense, uh, mater the, the material energy is temporary. Um, and the, but then it gets manifested again. It's cyc cyclical. Probably the cycle is going on eternally. So therefore, the material energy also is ultimately eternal. But it's not conscious. That's the difference. The real, real key is that it's not conscious. And so, so we, want, we, we need to know systematically how to uh, get free from the bonds of our previous work. Because all of us in this material world were suffering or enjoying uh, the results of our previous work and karma. So how do we get free of that? It's not possible to, to, to uh, perform prayas chitta to try to get free. There's too many things going on. And that doesn't really uproot as, explain, as, as uh, uh, we learned in the beginning of the sixth canto. That doesn't uproot the desire to perform these fruitive activities. So just, just in the, you know, getting rid of the symptoms is no way. We have to get rid of the root cause. And the root cause is our desire to be separate from Krishna. So the only thing that can really get, free, uh, get us free from the, 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 the root cause, which is the desire to be independent of Krishna, is to systematically train ourselves again to worship Krishna, which is our natural uh, uh, position. And it's all about the holy name. This is in the story of Ajamil, where Brickett was so... Uh, disturbed, you know, by hearing about the hells. He's a, he's a giant, em empathetic Vaishnav, listening to all these descriptions. And these are just a few of them at the end of the fifth canto. Very hair-raising, all the suffering, you know. How can they be saved? How can they be saved? So Shukadev, he, he first talks about prayaschitta, about negating the sins through practices and sacrifices. You know. But Pariga says, no, that's not going to work. That's like an elephant bathing, you know the analogy, the elephant bathing. Elephant gets all dusty in the forest, and you know, he goes into the lake, and he gets a nice bath. He's got the nice shower, you know, arrangement. So <laughs> he's all clean. But how's he going to dry off? He comes out. He's too big. There's no gumsha big enough for him, you know. So he rolls around on the in the dust. <laughs> he's dusty again. So similarly, we can we can get clean of, of the results, but the desire is still there, and then we go back to sinning. You know, and so that, that's uh, not going to work. So we need something to uh, uproot the very desire, and that's the practice of devotional service. Param drishtra navartate, that's the vishyabha nivartante, nirahara sedehi na rasa bhaja masabhyasa param drishtra navartate. That the attraction for the objects of the senses in which engaging we often commit sin is uh, 
recedes when we, re, when we restrain the senses from the object of the senses. But the desire remains. But seeing or ex experiencing directly the Supreme, even the, the, the desire is, is uprooted, the rasa, the, the desire for the rasa bhajam rasa bhyasya padam drishvana bhajati. Very important verse, because we experience, if you, if you chant Hare Krishna before in bhakti, that you're actually getting detached from things that you were entangled with for a long time. That, you know, you, you, you're getting cheto darpana marjanam. You're purifying the heart. You know, even, even if probably he knew, you know, even a few weeks, even a week someone comes to the temple, they're going to be transformed and uh, begin to taste the uh, process of devotional service. All right, any discussion on these five points or how to get free from them? Hare Krishna, bro. Hare Bhal, Danabari, go ahead. Uh, my uh, nice class. My uh, question is, um, when you mentioned, Prabhu, that Jard uh, Prakriti, which is uh, non-living, and uh, yeah, the, even though it's non-living, Jard Prakriti is uh, very strong, and we are Chetan, we are living, and it's still stronger sometimes than, sometimes we think that it's stronger than us, it's so strong that we can even conquer so in my question is how come even though his jerd is a non-living and he's so strong and uh, well, we are it, <laughs> because Krishna is behind it. My what does he say? He said Daivyesha Gunamayi Mama Maya So she's empowered, Durga is empowered by Krishna to keep us bound as long as we do not surrender to Krishna. That's what this verse is all about in at seven fourteen. These, this material energy composed of the three modes of nature is very powerful and impossible to cross over on your own. Uh, what does it say? It means, you know, very difficult to control, which came out difficult uh, to, uh, to cross over, which comes out di difficult to cross over. But something when you say in the English language, when you say it's difficult, it's really difficult to get into Harvard. You're not saying it's impossible. You're saying that you'll have to work really hard. But you may work as hard as you want, and if you don't surrender to Krishna, you'll never cross over. The, in other words, there's no way. <laughs> so, but then, But one who surrenders unto me easily crosses beyond it. Why is that? Because Krishna is in charge of Maya. She's his servant. She's performing the thankless task of reforming us of punning us and, and, and trying to convince us this isn't our natural state, our, our home. And so once we start to reform, then she, she slackens. Her, and, and that slackening takes, takes the role, that we, it takes the form as we can experience, is she doesn't have so much pull. You know, all these, these things that entrance everybody out there and they're under the thrall. A thrall means the control. Probably because the spell, perfect word, the spell of Maya. Your intelligence is lost, intelligence is, you know, used. The God-given intelligence is used uh, for maximizing some sinful pleasure, which then just degrades you further. This is Kali Yuga. It's all in the 12th canon described. So, so the, the idea is that, uh, yes, Maya is, is uh, made of, of material elements, but behind it is a living entity. I mean, the supreme living entity is Krishna, and he's deputed Maya Devi to keep us bound up with so many fan the Prabhupada calls it the phantasmagoria, another perfect word. Something that ultimately doesn't exist. It's like a dream. You know, a dream ultimately is just a concoction of the mind, but it can, can tremendously affect you. It can give you so much fright, it can give you uh, you know, evanescent delight, you know, but it's temporary. And then when you wake up you say, Oh, it was just a dream. Thank, say, thank God it was just a dream. I said, oh, it was just a dream. Let me go back to sleep. I really like that dream. But one way or another, it's, it's not something you can uh, sustain. And that's what material world is. The whole thing is, is, a, is a big, I don't want to say con job, but that's really what it, what it boils down to, isn't it? Is that, you, you know, oh, it's so lovely here, you know. I'm going to work and work and work and save my money and work and work and work and then I'll move to San Diego. I've heard how wonderful it is there, the beaches, and it's always sunny all the time, the perfect weather. And, you know, and you die eventually, no matter where you are <laughs> in San Diego. <laughs> but you forget about that. So you, you get that in your mind, you know. So that's, what, that's the power of Maya is to keep us under the spell until and unless 
we meet a devotee, in the, or Krishna himself, which is rare, very rare. But there's always Vaishnavs, and especially now, by the mercy of Srila Prabhupada and his great effort and compassion, he's created this society. So even in this God-forsaken place of you know, the United States, there are places all over the country, you know, and now all over the world, where you can actually get the proper knowledge and you can have a, uh, you know, encouragement and facility for practicing the practice that will uh, cultivate the consciousness where you can extricate yourself. Maya is Krishna's servant. It's not, she's not to blame, you know. And yes, it seems impossible to cross over, but when we become a Krishna conscious and pray to him constantly and serve him, uh, we, 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 uh, Maya will release her uh, spell on us. That's the answer. All right, we have to need to go on, and now I lost my place. I'm sorry? Thank you so much. Hare Krishna. Okay, you, you say you, you want to ask something? Okay, but we have that. So does uh, the material nature include matter? Um, material nature includes matter? Includes matter, of course. Matter. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, the, that's explained also in the seventh chapter. Boomer, Apa, Onanovaya, Kangmanu, Bhadrevaja. These eight comprise or constitute my uh, inferior energy, material energy. Progressively more subtle, earth, you know, is obvious, water, fire, air, ether, is, you know, you can't perceive it, but it's there, space. Even mind, I mean, we all have a mind, right? You have a mind. And, uh, <laughs> but we can't see it. You can't, you can't see it, you can't smell it, you know, but it's there. <laughs> so, yes, it's, 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 it's uh, but it's all inanimate. It's all inanimate. It's only animated by the presence of the soul. You know, that's the idea. And, and the modes of nature are different than the matter? Yeah, the modes of nature are kind of how uh, we interact with nature. The modes really uh, exist, uh, uh, affect the mind. And, uh, you, you know, and we explain, I think, in the 14th chapter what the symptoms are, you know. And and but you but but they they're kind of self-evident when they described you can say yeah I can recognize that you know yeah I remember I used to be really in the mode of ignorance I liked this intoxication and I wanted to sleep all day Sunday I was I was in that position once where oh it's Sunday let me sleep till till noon oh, <laughs> that was bliss <laughs> I thought I probably talks about that how. The, the, he said in Calcutta sometimes the postal peons, you know, the guys who carried a letter, they would take the letters and they'd be delivered to some business, you know. But they would just go to the park and take a, a long nap, hours, you know. And, they would, and, they, and, and then they would deliver the mail. And then the guy, they would come back and say, what took you so long? You know, cause it's, it's, so, well, you know, they, I, went, I went to this office, that office, they sent me here and there. And, you know, and they thought, oh, we really, you know, I got a great deal. I got paid and I just I slept all day. <laughs> The mode of ignorance. So, yeah, there's there's subtle ways in which we interact with the with the material energy, and they uh, they affect us as we cultivate them or as we associate with them. Again, this verse, karanam gunasanga se. Gunasanga means the association with the modes is the cause for how what will we get a good or bad birth? What your destiny is. So we're making our destiny. By how we so associate, what mode we're in, and how we associate with what, we, what modes we cultivate. So if we just we don't know any of the science, then we just we're just victimized. Whatever association we have to be in, we cultivate it. You know, with, I mean, with with uh, whoever you know raises us or her friends are, or whatever you know. In other words, there's no conscious control, no conscious effort to go up to the mode of goodness and in the mode of goodness to cultivate pure goodness. That can only happen when we get good instruction and we surrender to it. Because, it, because it's not easy getting out of the lower modes. It's, it's a real difficulty. That's why Prabhupada had these four regular principles. He would never compromise, compromise in that. You know, whereas the, so many others come, need this yogi, that yogi, no restrictions, you just do this, chant this mantra, and you pay a fee like that. Prabhupada never wanted that. All right, moving along. I've lost my place. What's the paragraph we're in? Uh, the position, the position of Ishwara, the Supreme Lord, is that of supreme consciousness. The jivas, or the living entities, being parts and parcels of the Supreme Lord, are also conscious. Both the living entity and material nature are explained as prakriti. 
the energy of the Supreme Lord. But one of the two, the jiva, is conscious. The other prakriti is not conscious. That is the difference. Therefore, the jiva prakriti is called superior because the jiva has consciousness which is similar to the Lord's. The Lord's is supreme consciousness, however, and one should not claim that the jiva, the living entity, is also supremely conscious. The living being cannot be supremely conscious at any stage of his perfection, and the theory that he can be so is a misleading theory. Conscious he may be, but he is not perfectly or supremely conscious. The distinction between the jiva and the Ishvara will be explained in the 13th chapter of the Bhagavad Gita. The Lord is Chaitra Gya, conscious, as is the living entity, but the living being is conscious of his particular body, whereas the Lord is conscious of all bodies. Because he lives in the heart of every living being, he is conscious of the psychic movements of the particular jivas. We should not forget this. It is also explained that the Paramatma, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, is living in everyone's heart as Ishvara, as the controller, and that, and that he is giving directions for the living entity to act as he desires. The living entity forgets what to do. First of all, he makes a determination to act in a certain way, and then he is entangled in the actions and reactions of his own karma. After giving up one type of body, he enters another type of body as we take off and put on clothes. As the soul thus migrates, he suffers the actions and reactions of his past activities. These activities can be changed when the living being is in the mode of goodness, in, in sanity, and <laughs> understands what sort of activities he should adopt. If he does so, then all the actions and reactions of his past activities can be changed. Consequently, karma is not eternal. Therefore, we stated that the five items, Ishvara, Jiva, Prakriti, Time, and Karma, that of the five items, uh, four are eternal, whereas karma is not eternal. The Supreme Conscious Ishvara is similar to the living entity in this way. Both the consciousness of the Lord and that of the living entity are transcendental. It is not that the consciousness is generated by the association of matter. That is a mistaken idea. The theory that consciousness develops under certain circumstances of material combination is not accepted in the Bhagavad Gita. Consciousness may be pervertedly reflected by the covering of material circumstances, just as light reflected through colored glass may appear to be a certain color. But the consciousness of the Lord is not materially affected. Lord Krishna says, Mayadyakshinapakati. When he descends into the material universe, his consciousness is not materially affected. If he were so affected, he would be unfit to speak on transcendental matters, as he does in the Bhagavad Gita. One cannot say anything about the transcendental world without being free from materially contaminated consciousness. So the Lord is not materially contaminated. Our consciousness, as the present, at the present moment, however, is materially contaminated. The Bhagavad Gita teaches that we have to purify this materially contaminated consciousness. In pure consciousness, our actions will be dovetailed to the will of the Ishvara, and that will make us happy. It is not that we have to cease all activities. Rather, our activities are to be purified, and purified activities are called bhakti. Activities in bhakti appear to be like ordinary activities, but they are not contaminated. An ignorant person may see that a devotee is acting or working like an ordinary man, but such a person with a poor fund of knowledge does not know that the activities of the devotee or of the Lord are not contaminated by impure consciousness or matter. They are transcendental to the three modes of nature. We should know, however, that at this point, our consciousness is contaminated. So, the, the key um, element in, a, in, our, in activity of any kind is the motive, is what your motive is in doing it. And with this, this problem, you know, made this word common, fruitive, fruitive, means that with a motive, to enjoy the fruits. That's fruit of activity. And where is that not happening? The material world is full of fruit of actors, not just human beings, but everyone. You're working, 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 and you want it for a certain reason so you can get something, something to eat or something to, for protection or whatever. So that, that fruit of nature is, is the basis upon which karma rests. That, that you do something that's, that's selfish, let's just call it selfish. And that selfishness, Prabhupada explained, can be expanded. 
you know, the famous verse, Punksa Sriya Mutini Bhavam Eitani, describing how material life begins with sex desire and then the family. So then, this materialistic family, so it says, Atta, Griha, Cheta, Sutta, Apta, Vitta, these, these things. So then you have to, have to worry about a home, you know, and then uh, a, a job or a chetra. You know, chetra means, okay, farming, because most people in the, uh, traditionally farm. But it means the place of, where, you, where you get your sustenance, job or uh, land, whatever. And then children, they're a big responsibility. And, of course, wife, uh, relatives of all kind, all supported by vitta, money. Janasimoha yamahamma meti. And this expansion generates the, the deep-rooted sense of I and mine, which is the essence of false ego. I am this body. Everything in relation to this body is mine. And this is who I am. And it's, that keeps us here. You see? So that, that, that's all a result of activity. Activity under the uh, impulsion of your senses and mind, the conditioned senses. So how to, how, so this goes on birth after birth. And in today's world, you know, in, in Vedic culture, there's all kinds of rules and regulations for family life and this life, and, so that you're not degraded by it. Because without those rules and regulations, you are going to be degraded. The senses are going to drag you down and you, you become very sinful. I'm just listening uh, to two se series of lectures. One is the uh, Sixth Canal, probably was talking about a Jamil. And he gave so many lectures. I think he was traveling in India on these chapters. And here was, this, here was an instance where uh, this, this fellow, young man, who was raised as a Brahmin, he was out in the forest getting firewood traditionally for some you know, fire, fire sacrifice for his guru or whatever. And uh, he saw a prostitute and a low, low class man, you know, embracing, having sex in the forest. And he just he couldn't, couldn't control the senses. So he marries the prostitute, and for his whole life he becomes, you know, sinful. You know? But he, never, he didn't forget completely his upbringing. So he, he named at least his last son, maybe all of his sons, children, after uh, Krishna. So he's now 80, he's 85 or something, he's about to die, and he's got a little boy, you know, he's having sex to lady. And, uh, but he was named Narayan. So when the Yamadudas came and ter terrified him, he called out to Narayan, Narayan! <laughs> and as soon as he called out Narayan, helplessly, the Vishnu Dudas came and saved him and, and prevented They were more powerful than the Yamadudas. The Yamadudas were confused. I thought we were serving the supreme judge in the universe. What's going on? They said, you don't know anything about uh, real religion. So they went back to Yamaraj, and he gives a wonderful lesson about the power of the holy name, and, you know, and how purifying it is. So, the, so Prabhupada's theme here, he's talking about purifying, right? Purifying our consciousness. And that's the essence of the power of the holy name. What's the first, first phrase, first words of the Shikshastika? You know. Yes, Cheto Dharpa Namarjanam. So this, this congregational chanting, meaning that the, the silent meditation is not going to cut it for us. We're too disturbed. Even Arjun declined, right? But we can come together, sing and dance, right? We're already doing that. <laughs> so the, come together and sing and, and chant this mantra. Chant the Hare Krishna mantra, or any names of God, but Hare Krishna mantra, especially for this age. And the purification will take place right away. Right away there will be purification. And you'll be transformed. You may not realize it, and you may think back, you know, but th that'll stay with you, even one chanting. What to speak of being seriously chanting regularly, both in congregation and, and, and meditatively, you know. What's the whole, what's the, how, how does it work? It's just like coming out into the sunshine. Krishna Surya Sama Maya Hoy Andhikar. Yahan Krishna Tahan Nahi Maya Adhikar. Adhikar means strength. We talk about the strength of Maya. But Krishna is like the sun. Maya is like darkness. Darkness can never win over the sun, right? The sun comes up and the darkness is defeated. So we, we, we come out into the Krishna sun by the chanting of the holy name. That is non different from Krishna. And even if we know it or not know it, if we, if we just hear and get absorbed in the chanting, the, the eons of karma are eradicated. We don't even know how beneficial it is. But after, if we seriously take it, we feel how beneficial it is. That even in these dangerous times, there's so much mental problems people are having. If we stay with the program of Krishna consciousness, we regularly chant and we take shelter of the deities, and we, uh, you know, 
then we can keep our st stability. You know, we don't have to uh, spin off into uh, paranoia. And, uh, there's a whole lot of mental problems going on, you know, because people are living in a, in a bubble of illusion, and this whole pandemic has shattered it. Security, how's the security? I'm going to go outside and people are wearing masks, you know, and I have to wear a mask. And two years now, what's going on? You know, just keep chanting, you know, and, and we, we, we can survive. But we should take all precautions that are necessary. We got our fan going here. But, uh, the, but, the, <laughs> but the, uh, the, the idea is that this is the, you know, it, it's nice to, to step back a moment and, and, and think of the context. Here is Prabhupada sitting, or you know, I think he's sitting in a, in a room up in, uh, north, in, in uh, up, Upper uh, Manhattan, uh, alone. He's got, he, somehow someone gave him this reel-to-reel -reel, you know, recorder. So he's got a great chance now to leave something for pos prosper posterity. Posterity, he doesn't know exactly what's going to happen. You know, he, 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 was, he, said, he himself said he was surprised at how the movement exploded and you know, all the books came out and all the devotees came. But now at this point, he's recording this, he's all alone. He's got this one boy, um, he, was, he was spoken of, the, uh, was it uh, Naveen Anira that described? Robert, back to Robert, his friend. What? Was it? Yeah. And he was helping him. He was, you know, would come and visit. Any other people eventually, you know, some would come and visit, but basically he's alone. So he records this. You can imagine how long it took. You know, this thing is long. It took him days, obviously, you know. And uh, he's putting everything in here. He's putting the whole process. <laughs> and uh, it's, a, it's such a, a wonderful um, expression of care. You know, he said, well, even if, even if I have to go back to India or, you know, this whole thing, I don't know, at least this will be preserved. It's on this tape. And, you know, he, of course, he got burglarized. Luckily, the tape recorder was taken, but the tape was left. That's why we have it. <laughs> Who needs the tape? I'm going to sell the tape recorder, right? The thief, and I'll, I'll get some drugs. You know, no one wants the tape. Or maybe he had it someplace else. But whatever, the tape stayed. So uh, that, that, you know, the Christian was guiding him because he became discouraged up there, from there. It describes in the Lilamrita that after that, that robbery, Prabhupada wasn't really so eager to stay up there anymore. And he had another venue down there, you know, down in, in Bowery. You know, in other words, there's another place for him that some friends, they heard about this this real guru was up, uptown. They want to bring him downtown. And believe me, I know Manhattan. Downtown was where everything was happening. <laughs> Greenwich Village, you know, East Village. So probably, probably right in the middle of that, you know. But he had this tape, and so this was eventually transcribed, obviously, and became part of the Gita. We also eventually published it as a separate little booklet. I don't know if we still have it in print, but it's, yeah. So Prabhupada's systematically going through here and uh, explaining the different elements of the Gita. And uh, they're a wonderful, it's a wonderful introduction. Can, uh, the idea is that one should really become curious about, you know, this book, which has all of this wonderful information in it. All right, tell, help me out here. Where did I stop? <laughs> when we are materially contaminated? When we are materially contaminated, we are called conditioned. False consciousness is exhibited under the impression that I am a product of material nature. This is called false ego. One who is absorbed in the thought of bodily conceptions cannot understand his situation. Can someone run back there and close the kitchen door or whatever door is open? Thanks. This is called a false ego. One who is absorbed in the thought of bodily conceptions cannot understand his situation. The Bhagavad Gita was spoken to liberate one from the bodily conception of life. And Arjun put himself in this position in order to receive this information from the Lord one must become free from the bodily conception of life. That is the preliminary activity for the transcendentalist. One who wants to become free, who wants to become liberated, must first of all learn that he is not this material body. Mukti, or liberation, means freedom from material consciousness. <clears throat> In the Srimad Bhagavatam, also, the definition of liberation is given. Mukti hitvanita rupam swarupena vivastitihi. Mukti means liberation from the contaminated consciousness of this material world and situation in pure consciousness. All the instructions of the Bhagavad Gita are intended to awaken this pure consciousness. And therefore we find that the last stage of the Gita's instructions, that Krishna is asking Arjuna whether he is now in purified consciousness. 
Purified consciousness means acting in, the, in accordance with the instructions of the Lord. This is the whole sum and substance of purified consciousness. Consciousness is already there because we are part and parcel of the Lord. But for us, there is the affinity for being affected by the inferior modes. But the Lord, being the Supreme, is never affected. That is the difference between the Supreme Lord and the small individual souls. So, Mukti Hidvanyata Rupam Sarupena Vivastadi, this is a very important phrase. There's a little table of contents in the, twelve, in the second canto of what the, what the contents of the Bhagavatam are. I think it's in chapter 10. And Mukti is one of the subject matters. So each of those uh, subject matters is defined there. And this is the definition, this is the most often quoted one. Mukti hitpa anyata rupam swarupena vivastati. So just, just mukti alone, being uh, the usual definition uh, is just being free from, the materi- from matter, from, from material bondage, and no more birth, old age, disease, and death. That's a negative concept. But this, this includes the positive concept. So the first thing is, mukti hitva anyata rupam. Literally means giving up all other forms. And this form we have now is one of them, uh, those other forms. And even in this one body, as Krishna explains at the beginning in the second chapter, Dehi Nosman, Yata Dehi, that we've already been through so many forms, even in this life. They change slowly so we don't recognize them as such. But, you know, when you get uh, we, we, childhood, youth, adolescent, middle age, old age, you know, they're different bodies. So, and then when the whole body breaks down, the machine eventually breaks down, you get another body, hopefully human, but possibly subhuman. Uh, then there's another one. So these are o- other rupas. These are other uh, forms than our swarupa. We all have a swarupa, which is our real form, unchangeable, and is buried in there. I mean, you know, we don't know what it is now. So Krishna Kaja is awakening, and the, and the central fact of that other form is that it's uh, submissive to Krishna, that we're acting as Krishna's hands or legs. In other words, we're completely submissive to the will of the Lord, but we're fully Krishna conscious. You know? And so that's our natural state, and that's the state of, of real happiness. There's a, this nice little uh, sutra in the, in the Brahma Sutra, Ananda Mayo Bhyasat, which means from the activities of the Lord, we can understand that He is always full of bliss. Ananda Maya, Maya means full of, He's always full of bliss. And even He's killing the demons, He's still having a good time. You know? The whole thing is Leela. Leela means play. You know? And we are part and parcel of Krishna. So we're naturally also Ananda Maya. But because we're minute, we can be covered over by matter and illusion and suffer like anything. So when we get to our surup, it means we regain our Ananda Maya nature. And that means that we're always uh, trying to satisfy Krishna's senses and Krishna's pleasure. In our conditioned state, that sounds, what about me? <laughs> See? But the point is, is that <laughs> that really is you. That's your actual nature. This is, un- this is unnatural. Artificially separated from Krishna by these contraptions called these, these material bodies. But at least in the human form, we can try to understand these things, reform our activity, reform our consciousness, and come back again, wake up to our natural consciousness of blissfully pleasing Krishna. And we know that Krishna's you know, uh, pleasure is in, in exchanges of love. He also enjoys... Uh, playing with his friends that, that you know and sometimes he wants he enjoys that they're chastising him climbing on his back that informality is much more pleasing to him than oh he's the you know the almighty god and i'm just the incident that's not so pleasing but he says oh it's subal you know you know <laughs> what, what why did you steal my my ladus <laughs> you know in other words, this informality is what Krishna likes. You, you, you read the fourth chapter, Adi Lila, you'll see all of it. All right, so, so we, now, again, remind me, where do we end? Was it the middle of 11? Yes, okay, we'll begin there tomorrow. But we have two or three minutes, so. Have a, oh, we have questions. Questions, oh, I forgot about the questions. All right, we have one mic. We, sh- we should activate both mics. But uh, we kind of drifted in. Hare Krishna. Hare Bhavan. So my one question was, in this human form, is it possible that we get situated in our swarup? Or is it... Yes. Or, uh, yeah, the swarup is not something physical. 
It's a state of consciousness. Right. That the, 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 the highly advanced devotees, they're always, it's like Srila Prabhupada, he, he, it's mentioned in the eighth, eighth canon, uh, eighth chapter of Madhya Lila, the, the conversation between Ramana and Noi, Lord Chaitanya. That the great devotees, they're, they're always serving the Lord in their sarup, within their consciousness, deep within their consciousness. And they can also uh, interact outside. Mm -hmm. They're living on two planes. That's why Prabhupada said, I'm not really here, you know, on Second Avenue. I'm really still in Vrindavan. And Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati said the same thing. Because Gorka Short didn't want him to go to Calcutta. I will, I will never go there. You know, this is Maya place. So, but but Bhakti Siddhanta went. Did he disobey his, his, his guru? No, he said he didn't really, you know, he was still in Vrindavan. He had chanted a billion names. You know, he, the, the mind was completely under control. And, and he was still living in Vrindavan and, and, and serving Krishna in his, in his sarup, but at the same time, uh, you know, managing this whole uh, expanding uh, society, you go to, go to Yamat. So that's, that's the thing. That, so mukti can take place, yeah, even, even in this body. Iha yasya hari dase karma namanasa gira nikala shatrabhasrastu jivan mukta sa uchite. Prabhupada always called iha means your activities are all Hare Dase, within the realm of serving Hari. And what, what activities? Karmana, Manasagara, your active senses, your mind, uh, your words, you know, everything. They're all s s linked to Krishna through service. Nikola, Nikola, Nikola Shashavastasu is known as Jivan Mukta. It means even in this body, even in this world, you're a liberated soul. So that state can, we can attain. It's a very high state. It means full absorption, but yeah, you can do it. All right, one real quick one. Now we have a time only for a quick, quick poem. Uh oh, but did we write? Okay, no, no poems tonight. How you go? Krishna, quick. quick. Yeah. So I have a question. Why do we get negative thoughts, or I would say uh, intrusive thoughts? Do you think uh, I was just doing a random Google search? Why do we get these thoughts? Oh. So Google said um, they come from the hell. From the head? Uh, the not hell. From the, not from the brain? These yeah. negative, negative and intrusive thoughts. From the hands? Hell. Yeah. Hell. H-E-L-L. -E -L -L. Oh. So what do, you, what do you have to say about uh, why we get negative thoughts even if we don't want to have them? Because <laughs> I, I sprained my ankle about more than a, two months ago. It's still giving me some pain. Why do I get the pain? Because... I, I did something, and I affected this ankle, and, and that's the nature of the, of the material world. So the mind is also material, and over many lifetimes, and especially this lifetime, we've exposed the mind to evil and modes of nature and all kinds of thoughts, and those things, they're, they're, we've been hearing that in the morning class. It's the vasanas, so many impressions in the mind. So they're in there, and it's just like, that's why it has to be cleansed you know, if you don't do anything, then, they, then the thoughts will bubble up and, and take you from here to there. That's why we have discipline. Get up. Get up in the morning. You know, don't sleep in. Use those precious morning uh, hours for cultivating Krishna consciousness. That's the best time. Chant Hare Krishna. See the deity. You know, hear the classes. Take prasadam. You know, dance, chant, and dance. That's all affecting the mind. But, they, but, but it, it's, it's, it, we, we're all quite diseased, and it takes a while for rehabilitation. But we're all, you know, being cured. We don't have time. Yeah, thank we you. We have all the time. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Hare. Hare.